Hello, how's it going? Now that we've got things more or less working, we need to make our renderer more robust. OpenGL can handle events like resizing and hiding the window, but in Vulkan, we pretty much need to do that ourselves. The basic process we're going to follow is while we're rendering, some errors can be detected and, and thrown out. And then if an error is detected, we want to flush out all of the pending work on the GPU and recreate the invalid resources. So one of the benefits of dynamic rendering is that this is really, really contained. If we want to rebuild the swap chain, we literally just rebuild the swap chain. Let's get into it. We'll go to our drawing code we've got here and note here that a bunch of these functions have got some, some warnings here. And this is because these functions, although they do things, they also return values. The main ones specifically are this wait for fences. This acquire next image is also returning an error potentially. And then we've got this graphics queue submission and present. Now it's worth looking into which sorts of messages and errors these can all give, but the really important ones are the acquire next image and present. They can both give two sorts of errors, a suboptimal message or an out of date message. Now a suboptimal message counts as success. It's a success code, but it's an indicator that the swap chain could benefit from a rebuild. And an out of date just straight up is an error. It's like, this isn't gonna work. You need to rebuild the swap chain. So what we can do is we can check for these messages. So at this point in our code, we've identified basically the points at which we want to recreate the swap chain. I guess the question is, how do we recreate the swap chain? So to start with, as always with Vulkan, we'll refactor the code a little bit. The swap chain was given ownership of a bunch of resources, but I want to give the swap chain total ownership of those resources. In other words, I want to give it its own deletion queue it can pretty much pop those deleter functions on during creation. And then when it gets the message to rebuild, it just flushes the whole queue. So I'll go to the renderer and somewhere here we should see, we've got these deletion queues. I'll just grab, it's a lot of template code there. I'll just copy paste that, go over to the swap chain and that can be a private member there. Great, and now the build function does not need to take a deletion queue. We have our own. And just to help with things so we don't get errors, I'm going to make a destroy. But that destroy function is going to need to take a Vulkan device to put into the deleter queue. Okay, so on the source code side, put in our destroy function and we'll pretty much do the same thing as the renderer. So if we go down to the renderer where we destroy stuff, we just go through everything. Great. So we can go to the renderer and then before we do anything, we can take our swap chain and tell it to get destroyed. Get wrecked, my dude. Now just fix the errors. So if we go up to the initializer, we'll get rid of the, yeah, we don't need that. And then in the swap chain down here, of course, it's just a big copy paste game. So this looks like it should work. 
it looks like it should work. As a matter of fact, if we run this, then it is working. We see a triangle. We see no errors. We can close this down. We're not getting any errors. So I'll come back to this. There is a small error in this, which will not be apparent at the moment until we come to actually destroying and rebuilding. But just take a second, think about what the error could be, and I'll go on with the rest of this and we'll, we'll revisit it. Okay, so rebuilding pretty much goes like you would expect, right? We've got this function up here, which builds a swap chain. We've got this function here, which destroys a swap chain. Well, in order to rebuild, like I said, we pretty much wait until everything's done. We wait until the queue is idle, then destroy the swap chain and rebuild it. So I'm going to do something very, very similar. I'm just going to make a slight modification here. Because I want to take in a GLFW window in order to query its size query the new size of the window, basically. Okay, but there we have it, and yeah, this is pretty predictable. So we'll just go to the source code to find this. So we'll just wait for the device to idle. Once the device has idled, we will destroy the swap chain and then we will recreate the swap chain. That's looking pretty good. We can just go to the backend and in here we've got this glfw backend file and I'm just going to make the window resizable. Side note, I wrote this a long time ago and got lost trying to find where I had defined this because I was trying to define it elsewhere and it wasn't working. But yeah, hey, there we have it. We just need to go to the renderer and actually call those functions. Okay, great. So we've got our triangle here. And if I've done this properly, let's get a little there. This should be resizable. So we can drag it, drag it, drag it. And uh-oh. I've got a problem. Hmm. So like I said, frustrating some of these errors, but I'm looking through here and it says, okay, image view must be valid. So even though we've destroyed our image views, the program looks like it's got a valid, it looks like it's got an image view, which was destroyed, but is still hanging around. And the issue there is that I missed this originally. Swap chain has got uh, the vector of images and views. And when we go to destroy it, it calls the destructor function for those things. But physically in memory, they're still sitting around at the top of the vector. Because if we go back, we are pushing them on somewhere. Back here, yeah, we're pushing on new images and views. So those images and views are getting pushed on at the back of the vector. That's not the region that's being looked at, but we can fix that simply enough. We can just go clear. And I'm also going to simplify, print out some errors here. So not errors, but messages. So when we go and rebuild or build the swap chain, Part of that is querying all the physical devices and things like that. It prints out a whole bunch of stuff and that's annoying. So what I'll do is first up, I'll get the logger and then I'll just put out a simple message like rebuilding the swap chain. But then I will disable and re-enable the logger because those other bits of the function just print so much. Okay, cool. So it printed out a bunch of stuff and we've got this window. We can give it a go, resize it. And it says, hey, recreating the swap chain every time. Awesome.
interesting. That's, that's okay, I guess. Um, and we can close and we're not getting any errors, but I guess, I think if we run this and then minimize, we're getting a whole bunch of errors. Okay. So that's the only thing we need to handle, right? Is minimizing. So what's happening when we minimize is the program is being resized, but it's being resized to a size of zero by zero. And then it's trying to build a swap chain where every image on the swap chain is zero by zero. It's not great. So what I'm going to do to get around this, we can do these things with callbacks. My case is a little different because I've got two threads running GLFW. I would want to put all the polling and event handling and callbacks and things on just the main thread and then have a sort of message passing data structure. But I'm going to save that for a future video. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to hack it basically. So for the swap chain, I'm going to add a public variable, which just tracks whether the swap chain is outdated. And I can update this when I build the swap chain. So obviously, immediately upon building the swap chain, it is now current. And then in the renderer, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the window is minimized. The way I'll do that is just check if the width and height are zero. Now in the case where we're minimized, I want to do a no op. I want to just leave it. So I'll say, just do nothing. And then when we get past that stage, we've got a valid size and we can say, okay, well, we've got a valid size. Is the swap chain due for a rebuild? And if it is, then we'll go ahead and call that. And in all these cases where I've identified that the swap chain is due for a rebuild, I will just set that flag and then get out of there. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Okay, great. So we've got our function here. We can, just as before, resize it. It looks like it's mostly working properly. That is a little strange, but hey, it's mostly working properly. And let me try minimize it. So we minimize and then bring it back. Minimize, bring it back. That looks like it's handling it and we can close it and we've got no errors. Okay, so every system is slightly different. This method may disproportionately slow down your system. It's not the best way to do it. Ideally, I'd be wanting something like a callback with, with a like a message or an interrupt system because I, it's not ideal to be doing an if statement every step of a while loop. But anyway, it gets the job done at least. So that'll probably be it for today. Hope you had fun as always, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Hi, so I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all of my channel supporters. If you would like to support the channel, it's $2.50 a month. That's all I ask, but it's not expected. If you are not able or willing to support the channel financially, the best thing you can do is the usual, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know what you're enjoying because I am trying to make the best educational content that I can under the constraints. So with that out of the way, really big thank you to Antonin Karet, Dankiel Foles, Declan, Andalon Studios, Isaiah Meyer, Mathieu Derick, Moim, and Shreya. Thank you so much, my dudes. I really do appreciate it. It's fuel for the fire. Keep me going, keep me motivated. Um, but yeah, have a great one. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.